When Jacques Cartier landed on these shores in 1497, what happened? Was he attacked? No. Was he imprisoned? No. Was he starved? No, he was starving when he showed up. Then he, a stranger to these lands, was fed, clothed, and shown everything. Jump forward 518 years now and see what has happened. Cartier's people, the Europeans, us, began settling the land for themselves. We spread, covered the lands of all the tribes, not just the ones that took the explorers in. We abused the resources of these lands. We killed all the buffalo. We drained the bays of fish. We kept making agreements with these native peoples, agreements that we had no intention of keeping. We pushed these people further and further from their traditional resources, ones that belonged to them by right. Resources that we'd already promised to them that were theirs, despite us having no right to claim them in the first place. We pushed a growing population into ever-shrinking spaces and told them to be more like us. To be fair, we weren't the only ones doing this. The States did it. Australia did it. And then the UN took notice. In 2007, they drafted a declaration and for countries like us to, to sign to promise that we would treat our indigenous people with respect. And what did we do? We refused to sign it. For three years, we let that document sit, unsigned. Then, in 2010, we decided, why not, and sign the UN Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. What a sick joke that was. Nothing changed after we signed it. If anything, things got worse. Why? Because the Canadian government doesn't care. But why don't they care? Why don't they care about the 4.3% of the population that identifies as belonging to one of the three main indigenous groups, the Métis, the Inuit, and the First Nations? And why don't they honor agreements that they've made with these groups and the UN? It's simple, really, because few people actually know or care about the issues. That's why I'm here today. I care about the fate of over a million people in this country. And despite how vile the situation might be, it wouldn't actually be that hard to turn around. I'll explain why later. First, I need everybody to understand the way things are now and the way they should be, according to the UN. Article 1 of the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. Indigenous peoples have the full right to full enjoyment of all human rights and fundamental freedoms as recognized in the Charter of the United Nations. Now, this may seem simple, right? Everyone in Canada enjoys those rights. Wrong. So, very wrong. Let's take a closer look at some of those. Article 18. Everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. This includes the right to manifest their, manifest their religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship, and conscience. Let's talk about residential schools for a moment, shall we? Effectively, what the government and missionaries did was take First Nations children from their happy lives in their villages or in later years, reservations, and send them to boarding schools. Now, you may be thinking, that's not so bad. I go to a boarding school. But these schools were nothing like TCS. Every day, the children were <coughs> forced to go to church, no matter what their traditions may have been. At church, they were made to confess their sins. They didn't even know what a sin was when they first arrived. The word is not normally part of First Nations culture and tradition. And when they didn't confess a sin, they were punished, both physically and emotionally. And then they were told that they were going to hell. So what did they do? They made stuff up. But then when they did confess sins, they were punished as though they had actually done those sins. And eventually, over time, their own traditions and religion were drilled out of them and replaced with the European way. Article 26, parents have a prior right to choose which kind of education their children and receive. May I stress again that these children were forcibly taken from their homes and parents were legally charged if they weren't sent. They didn't send their children. <coughs> Article 21, everyone has the right to vote. First Nations people were first given the vote in 1960. Now, Article 4 of the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. Indigenous people have the right to self-determination and autonomy in matters relating to their internal or local affairs, as well as ways and means of financing these affairs. 
When researching for this talk, I watched a movie. It was a documentary about a First Nations reserve called the People of the Attawakaskat River. That reserve suffers from a severe lack of resources. So what does the government do? They send in one of their own people, who we paid from the band's funds, to manage the funds for the band for them, despite that person having never been to that reservation before. Article 7. Indigenous individuals have the right to life, physical and mental integrity, liberty, and security of person. Now, the key words there are mental integrity. Levels of poor mental health in First Nations communities are staggering. First Nations youth are five to six times more likely to commit suicide than other youth. And adults are twice as likely. Among Inuit, this figure skyrockets to a more than 11 times more likely to commit suicide than the rest of the population. In addition, depression follows this trend, with First Nations individuals being twice as likely to, to suffer from depression. And that doesn't sound like mental integrity to me. But why? Why are First Nations people facing so many mental health issues? It's not genetic, that's been proven to be impossible. It's the destruction of culture. Which brings me to the next article. Indigenous peoples have the right not to be subject to forced assimilation or destruction of their culture. Over the years, the indigenous people of Canada have faced tremendous pressure against their culture. Picture it this way. You, your parents, your grandparents, your many great-grandparents have all lived in a country. And you've developed amazing languages, rich stories, old and an ancient culture. Then, some people show up and you let them stick around. After all, you've got tons of room. But then they, with guns, force you to stop speaking your language, stop dancing your dances, stop telling your stories, and to be sure, they take your children away so they can teach them their ways, their right ways. Article 14. In Indigenous peoples have the right to establish and control their educational systems and institutions, providing education in their own languages in a manner appropriate to their cultural methods of teaching. Residential schools are what first come to mind, but I believe I've covered that enough already. 